Hi, it's me, Ingrid INFP. And I want to thank everybody for um, the support and the comments. Um, I feel much better now. I went to work yesterday and today. I needed to take a day off, basically, on Monday. I uh, was having migraines and basically feeling really groggy and awful. I'm not sure if I took twice my antidepressant medication because I basically I think what happened is that I woke up took the medication went back to sleep and then took the medication again but I'm not sure if I took the medication the first time around so yeah it wasn't that great um so I took a day off work which costs a lot of money you know it costs like the equivalent of like 150 dollars um every day that I am sick um because the first day you don't get the sick leave money. It's the second day that you get 80% of your um, salary. So, um, yeah, but I needed to do that. So I can't really get angry at myself for that. I realized that a lot of my anxieties are around money because I don't understand it. <laughs> um, I have been looking at apartments I looked at an apartment uh, on Monday when I was uh, on sick leave. I couldn't really change the dates because the last date to answer was that day. But then he was kind enough, the guy showing me the apartment, that I could postpone my decision uh, by two days. Um, but in the end, I said no. It was a good apartment, um, 40 square meters. Uh, I'm living currently in 25 square meters, um, but it was like twice the rent of my place now, um, which was around, well, it was almost, it was nearing 8,000 crowns a month, which is um, maybe $800, I'm not sure, um, which isn't worth it for being in a small town, just having a studio apartment. What was good in that place, though, was that it had a dishwasher and it had a laundry machine, which I definitely do miss in my in my uh, um, executive dysfunction mess. <laughs> but um, I had to let that one go because it just cost too much money. It was near the train station, which was good in case I went to like pop off to to Stockholm, uh, just because. Uh, but it's on the other side of the of the town from my workplace, um, so I'd have to learn to... <laughs> there are so many things that depend on each other, and if you aren't used to doing things, it's hard. Because <laughs> I would have to learn to um, bike again. And I'd have to also wake up early. <laughs> and all sorts of things. I just like being living close to my job. Uh, or next to public transport. But this town sucks at public transport, so... Anyway, um, in total, I applied to 12 apartments in one day, <laughs> just like that. I applied to 12 apartments and... Because I got into like TE mode, we need to get this done, you know? And I was just like sending, 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 you know? Maybe I should like double check my things when I'm sending them, but it, it does make me productive. Um, but it also makes me really anxious, you know, having to do that. So I'm glad I took that day off work. But you know, I shouldn't have to take a day off work just because I have to move. But I can't, I can't do it like everybody else. So I'm feeling much better. I got some sleep on Monday. Um, and I am visiting three different apartments today. I visited one now um, because I have half day free on Wednesday afternoons uh, to study my study time, which I basically never used to study because, well, we live in a society that has things open daytime and certain things that I have to do, like going to the bank or that kind of stuff. I always reserve it for my uh, Wednesdays. So anyway, I uh, 
I was at the psych ward this morning and thankfully there was a, a young uh, doctor who could show me around and she knew of my workplace and she um, she's well liked by my colleagues at my workplace uh, but since she's a junior doctor she just jumps all over the place she goes to different wards so right now she was at the psych ward and uh, she showed me around and uh, it felt quite good what happened though is that I apparently made a mistake with one patient where I listened to one doctor who told me to uh, that she didn't need to be in psychiatry anymore this patient uh, and I could send her over to uh, the regular GP clinic I can send her back basically because now she's uh, free from her symptoms and so I did as the senior doctor told me uh, and now she has suicidal thoughts and is uh, hospitalized in the psych ward that I'm taking care of so that was shitty <laughs> to find out that it's because of me pretty much that she didn't have the support that she needed to go but you know I'm not allowed to make my own decisions in psychiatry because I'm not a psychiatrist so I'm not going to be putting too much blame on myself but it, it, it did not feel that great um, otherwise it went well because I was only there in the morning then I went and visited another apartment uh, and I don't like when there's visits where you ha you are several people at the same time because everybody's like pressuring each other or like wanting to show like they're the best candidate and you have to be there and nervous because there was a couple and I mean obviously a couple will have more money to take care of an apartment than a single person so I felt like, you know, I'm not really, if I choose to take this apartment and they choose it too, they will get it rather than me. Uh, then, uh, uh, so there were three different groups of people and I was one of them. And everybody was like, done. They just went in and they were like, oh, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. Okay, great. Uh, let's go and uh, check the let's go and check the the laundry room and let's go and check the bicycle um, uh, storage. And I, I was like, wait, <laughs> you know, I need to take pictures of the rooms and like really analyze it and like think like, hmm, what does angle does the sun come in through the windows and um. There was a guy downstairs who was really loud and who was um he was like rapping really loud and and shouting and it was good because it was isolated from sound and the only way i could know that was um because that guy was so loud uh, on the floor underneath and on the floor above uh, you could not hear this guy shouting so that was a positive thing it costs slightly less but it's still quite expensive it's like uh, 6,800 um, it was uh, 50 square meters which was great it's very close to where I live um, uh, but I think that maybe this apartment is a bit too big for me um, I don't need to have it that big um, but I'm glad I said no to the first one because um, I now know that I can find the bigger, better places for l less price than the first one that I saw. So I am glad about that. Um, currently I'm paying 4,500 per month, which is a great price. Um, it's like, if you take out, basically for me, I just think of like dollars as like 10 times less money than crowns like you just take off a zero so 450 dollars uh, this is probably like not at all a good conversion rate uh, but that's the way i think of it in my head when i'm explaining to you guys so yeah um <laughs> i'm paying extremely little for for this town and so i get really disappointed when i go to these places and i'm like oh yes so they cost that much more but i do have the money okay i need to think of like in terms of abundance 
rather than in terms of stinginess, like I've always been taught to, to do things. Because my parents are hoarders and a thing of hoarding is that you are stingy uh, with your money. And I kind of find it funny because older Ina P. Insights was talking about she's going on a vacation and she wanted to know if she was going to be doing YOLO, the SE life, uh, splurging, or if she was going to be doing the SI um, <laughs> stinginess. And I definitely relate to that. I am very particular about where I spend my money. I often go into stores and then I'm like, no, I can't spend any money, you know? Uh, even though I have money. I mean, I'm not extremely rich like a doctor in the US would be. Uh, I am just a doctor under training, but still, you know, I have a decent salary. And at the moment I'm working full time, but even if I were to go down in, in time, I would be able to survive. I wouldn't like be having it comfortable, but I would be able to survive even by working just part time. So that is the state of my finances right now. But the state of my finances is not good enough that I can like go to driving school, which is extremely expensive, go to Japan, which is extremely expensive, and uh, buy an apartment or something, and or just buying an apartment is basically, I cannot buy an apartment uh, with the money that I have saved in the bank. But the fact that I do have money in the bank means that I don't need to like put so much stress on myself that I am going to become broke and uh, homeless if um, like if something goes wrong, you know. Uh, I live in, a, in Sweden that has social security and so if I become sick it's not the end of the world, I will not become homeless and I will still be able to go and visit my family and friends. That's the state. So I'm trying to think of like, okay, how can I accommodate my life to make things better? Um, like I need to have an apartment that is quite close to my job. I need to have an apartment that is um, like near things because I cannot drive. Um, I need to have a place that isn't super loud neighbors or um, that is like right next to a super busy road. There aren't that many busy roads in this town, so it's okay. I don't need to think about that point. But when I was in Stockholm, I, I had to think about that. Um, I need a place that has regular windows, preferably big windows so that I can uh, have the light in. Um, I need enough space for my furniture, which isn't that much, to be honest. Um, I, I need, there are certain things that I prefer having, but it's not essential. Um, for me, it's mostly location and um, that's um, like the environment around that is okay. And that the place isn't like falling apart and moldy and stuff like that. Um, as long as it's like reasonably uh, well built, um, like cleanish place um, that is not too expensive and that is in the center area of town or by my um, uh, by my GP clinic, then I'm fine. <laughs> but that isn't that easy to find, uh, unfortunately. And I've done apartment hunting so many times. I've moved eight times, this is the ninth time since 2014 that I've had to move, uh, which is a lot, which is a lot. I've been to a lot of different apartments and um, I've been pretty lucky, but that's because I am choosy about where I'm going to live. And, it, and often I've taken like a month off between each place that I move or I've been studying and so I had my summer holidays when I was going to move. And yeah, so now I don't have that possibility, but I did take 10 days off uh, at the end of um, May, beginning of June. And then I took two and a half weeks 
uh, in uh, at the beginning of August um, because total total I have five weeks of um, holidays this year um, so one and a half weeks plus two and a half weeks that makes uh, four weeks so that means that I still have one week that I can use uh, for either a autumn holiday or a Christmas holiday, unless I use the next year's for Christmas holiday. Um, I, I think that things are running along again. It's just that it's, it, it's a bit, it's discouraging to, to think that like just a single thing can destroy my whole mental health. Um, but I realize now that there were quite a few things that were um, hurting my mental health. There were relationships with other people that uh, I've been going through a lot there. Um, and um, my work, I've been doing quite a lot. Seeing that I'm at uh, my healthcare clinic only once a week. When I came to my clinic on Tuesday, there were like three people waiting for me in the line, like wanting to give me a post-it note and say, can you do this for this patient? Can you do this for this patient? It was literally three people. I, I, I was like on my way to just get a cup of tea and uh, that was enough, you know? Um, so I think it will be nicer once I'm back uh, to my GP clinic full time in April um, because like then all the problems will be spread throughout the week. Also, uh, my supervisor is on holiday and the other doctor who's in my team um, is away and the nurse that's on my team and the secretary that were on my team who are away or sick. So I was the only person that the psychologist, the um, social worker, uh, and the um, uh, nursing assistant in my team, uh, and the ph physiotherapist, they were all counting on me <laughs> to like sort where the patients should go. And that is a lot of work. Um, and it's like, it's a lot of TE work. And it's like, okay, wait, uh, I don't know what my supervisor would do. What would my, what would I do? <laughs> what would, and it's like, okay, so I need to delegate these tasks to different people. And I'm like, you know, you do this, you do this. And it's like, I'm not used to doing that, you know? It's just, it's weird because I have a lot of power over other people. Um, but I don't know how to use it. And therefore other people just use me for the power that I have by telling me to can you please like check on this patient can you please check on this um and then I'm like yes I mean nobody else can do what I do which is both good and bad um it gives me a lot of responsibility um but the responsibility should also have its perk of like being able to delegate to other people so that they can do more of the job for me rather than that I get all the stuff put on me um, and that's a hard ba balance to strike because I'm still learning um, but yeah that, that does put a lot of pressure on me so I talked to my boss um, my boss is an ENTJ so he's if you've ever seen um, <laughs> Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part two um, you maybe have seen uh, Voldemort uh, hugging Draco, which is like, like this path, path, and extremely awkward situation. So he wasn't hugging me, but he was just like, you know, patting me on the shoulder and was like, are you okay? You know, because I had written to him that I said, I'm not doing too well. Um, I'm afraid that I might be going back into burnout. Um, I... I just needed to tell you that because um, I needed basically to tell him that I got up time at uh, um, at the disability place, um, which like my boss does not see 
thank God my boss does not see that I have any disabilities. But, um, or disabilities, I mean autistic traits, ADHD traits. Um, thank God, like, my boss thinks that everything is going fine and uh, the way that I work. Um, that's not the reason that I'm going to uh, get an autism diagnosis. It's uh, because working full time means that I cannot focus on doing things outside of work, which would allow me to replenish my energy in order to go back to work. So there's nothing that really all on the work in the workplace that I, that needs to change. It's more how I manage the stuff outside of work. And so it's hard for me to like tell my boss, like, I need this to change. The only thing I can think of is maybe I should go down in time. And I don't really know how to do that though, because I still have my list of patients. My patients are listed on me. So I can't, <laughs> I kind of felt forced to go back to work on Tuesday um, because Otherwise, there would be nobody else who could take my patients. And I mean, I had one of the things on my list was somebody who was suicidal. Like, how do I, if I don't meet them, nobody else will. And like, you know, or this person has like, has new diabetes, just the new di diagnosis, um, took a blood test. And it was basically that this person has diabetes. This person needs to be called and explained what diabetes is and, and that kind of thing. And um, get the treatment plan like pretty, like now. And I couldn't really do that if I'm sick or away. Nobody else can take it because everybody else is sick or on holiday or, you know, everybody has, has their own patients to deal with. So it's it's tough because I, I felt like if I was sick on Tuesday I would have so much more to do the next Tuesday and that's not the way that I should think of things but it, it kind of is the, the way because otherwise I I would drown so I need to go every Tuesday to work and do my shit you know so yeah, that was pretty sad and I felt pretty tired and it feels sometimes, this is something that's pretty bad to say, but it feels sometimes that people take nurses feeling awful and stressed as more important than when a doctor is feeling stressed because I think that the reason for that is because, well, doctors are higher status. And also uh, the fact that a lot of doctors' job is not like visible. It's a lot of administrative work. It's a lot of just like sitting in front of the computer and writing stuff. While a nurse is like out and about and like, you know, uh, giving this medication to this patient or um, um, fixing a catheter or like um, uh, meeting different people, answering the phone. Uh, uh, well, a doctor's, a GP's job is very like silent or like invisible. And so people are like, oh, they, they don't work, but we do, we do. It's just that it's less visible. And so, and also I think that there's a culture in, um, in the nursing group that everybody is like helping each other very much. Um, well, in the doctor group, everybody is so like, alone in their own little room that we're not like taking care of each other in the same way so that's unfortunate um because i was explaining that i need to move and that is very stressful for me and it felt like nobody was listening everybody was just like oh well you can just buy a place and i'm like yeah but not really and also you're not listening <laughs> Uh, well, there was a nurse there who was saying, oh, like, um, like, I didn't sleep well last night. And it's like, I didn't sleep well last night either. Um, and everybody's like, oh, like, I'm so sorry. 
you know, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> nobody cares about me. Um, they do. It's just that they don't really understand my life. My life is like something that a lot of people would never really get. Um, because my life is not like following the, the conventional expected route um, that a person in a fairly conventional job like a nurse um, would do. Um, you know, most nurses get married to somebody of the opposite sex, um, have children pretty early, and, um, you know, are interested in, in certain hobbies like gardening or um, <laughs> other kinds of, uh, uh, like baking or that kind of hobby. Um, well, for me, I like making videos on the internet and talk about MBTI. I mean, like, <laughs> that is not the same thing. Uh, we do not have the same hobbies. Even though I like taking care of my plants, um, it's not like I am a homemaker kind of person, you know. I'm fairly shitty at taking care of things that aren't me, and I can't even take care of myself, really, so... Yeah. Anyway, uh, so today I have two more apartments to um, visit, and then I have one more on Friday, and I'm waiting for answers from the other ones. I did find an apartment that was actually a little house. It was a tiny house, and it was quite central in, in town. And um, it was uh, 30 square meters, like a tiny house, uh, with like everything in it um, and it was uh, I think that it was around uh, 6,000 uh, uh, crowns a month which isn't that expensive when you think that it's a house um, I mean there are apartments that are more expensive apparently so but I haven't gotten any reply for that so I, I don't think that I'm going to get that but that was pretty fun to see so I want to thank everybody and um, I want to know what are your experiences with um, uh, like adult things like moving. I hate moving, one of the worst things ever. Um, but there is some kind of, you know, it's something to do in life, I guess, to look at apartments and, uh, you know, I get into this tea frenzy of like, okay, I need to contact every single place, like in one day. Well, it's actually like an ongoing struggle. Um, and I'm going to get burnt out if I do that every single day. So I'm trying to like pace myself. It's hard to pace yourself when everybody else is like super hectic about like, we need to answer tomorrow. Um, but uh, I'm trying. So yeah, have a great day everybody. Bye.